What if I told you that someone had developed an energy source that could help us solve our biggest environmental challenges, purify our water and air, make our cities and homes more sanitary, and keep us safe from potential catastrophic climate change? What if I also told you that this energy source was cheap, plentiful, and reliable? I would say butter my butt and call me a biscuit. We won't have to use the fossil fuels that have been damaging the climate anymore, as energy is essential to society, but the current methods of getting it aren't ideal. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And today we're going to be looking at a video about fossil fuels made by Prager University. Let's get to it. Well, there is such a source. You probably know it as fossil fuel. Oil, natural gas, coal. But wait, don't fossil fuels pollute our environment and make our climate unlivable? Yes, they do pollute our environment. They don't necessarily make our environment unlivable, though they do make significant negative changes to our climate due to the excessive release of byproducts such as carbon dioxide and methane, not to mention the destructive means of acquiring these fuels from the environment. That, of course, is what we're told and what our children are taught. But let's look at the data. Yes, our children are taught evidence-based positions when it comes to schooling, hopefully at least. The vast majority of climate scientists and climate research from all over the world in universities, government and private research centers alike find these conclusions, and a correct examination of the data will support this conclusion. So let's take a look at the data you have chosen. Here's a graph you've probably never seen. The correlation between use of fossil fuels and access to clean water. More fossil fuel, more clean water. First of all, correlation does not equal causation. If I cut off a frog's legs and yell at it to jump, and it no longer jumps, can I assert that cutting off a frog's legs makes it deaf? No. A correct interpretation of the situation will let me know is because it doesn't have any damn legs. In the same sense, let's apply some skepticism to the correlation you have made. You are correlating an output with a middleman. Why do you burn fossil fuels? That's right, for usable energy. We utilize the energy to operate equipment that can clean and transport water to people. You can correlate atmospheric carbon dioxide and changes in global climate, as well as demonstrating the effects carbon has on heat absorption in controlled environments. If you could get the energy without the byproducts of fossil fuels, you would still get the improvements in water. Don't be so dishonest as to claim that fossil fuels are the only way to get that. Am I saying the more that we have used fossil fuel, the cleaner our water has become? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Am I correcting you by saying the more we've used energy, the cleaner our water has become? Yes, yes I am. In the developed world, we take clean water for granted. We turn on a tap and it's there. But getting it there takes a massive amount of energy. See, you even admit that it takes energy there. I can't believe this is serious. Yes, it takes a lot of energy. Now what we want to do is produce that energy in an efficient and clean way. If I could get that energy by killing babies, would I be able to say, don't stop me from killing babies as it's giving us clean water? No, of course not. You would insist on another way of getting that energy. Fossil fuels are causing damage to the environment. It's time to start transitioning to other less harmful ways of getting the same energy. Think of the man-made reservoirs, the purification plants, the network of pipes. In the undeveloped world, it's a much different story. They lack the energy, so they lack clean water. More fossil fuel, more clean water. The structure of that argument simply doesn't work. You use the term energy, that entire description, then at the end substitute the word energy for fossil fuels. Yes, fossil fuels can be used to make energy which can be used for good things, but that isn't why people call it dirty energy. It's a bad source of energy due to its byproducts. You can't just mention the positives of energy as though it's exclusive to fossil fuels and gloss over any of the negative side effects that are exclusive to fossil fuels. The same is true of sanitation. By the use of cheap, plentiful, and reliable energy from fossil fuels, we have made our environment cleaner. Take a look at this graph. More fossil fuel, better sanitation. I really don't want to do this again. The exact same issues exist here than existed with your first claim, and we've already addressed them. The negative effects of fossil fuels aren't on sanitation. It's on the environment overall. Generate energy using cleaner methods, and you will still get the improved sanitation, but without the damage to the environment. Your video just comes off as poorly thought out propaganda at this point. Okay, what about air quality? Here's a graph of the air pollution trends in the United States over the last half century, based on data from the Environmental Protection Agency. 
Note the dramatic downward trend in emissions, even though we use more fossil fuel than ever. How is this achieved? Above all, by using anti-pollution technology powered by fossil fuel, oil, natural gas, and coal. But even without modern pollution control technology, fossil fuel makes our air cleaner. Okay, one point at a time there, big boy. Yes, we can reduce the impact of fossil fuels, especially given when we first started burning them, we took absolutely no precautions in regards to the environment. Now we have implemented technology to minimize the pollution given out, but overall, CO2 in the atmosphere is still drastically increasing as a result of fossil fuels. At this point, it doesn't seem that fossil fuels will ever be clean enough to use them sustainably for the foreseeable future. Okay, now let's see your it makes the air cleaner claim. Indoor pollution caused by burning a fire inside your house, cabin, hut, or tent to cook and keep warm was a deadly global problem until the late 19th century when cheap kerosene, a fossil fuel byproduct, became available in America and Europe. Indoor pollution is still a major issue in the developing world today. Yeah, it's a major problem because they have no or minimal access to energy at all. If you hook them up to solar, wind, hydroelectric, or nuclear power, you would get rid of indoor pollution due to increased availability of energy, but without the huge CO2 emissions that fossil fuels cause. It's misleading for you to say it makes the air cleaner by implying people don't have to burn fires inside anymore. The point that is commonly raised is the cleanliness of air in the atmosphere, and you need to address that point. The best solution? Fossil fuel. And now we come to the biggest fossil fuel concern of all. Global warming. On this very sensitive topic, we need to get our terms straight. There is a big difference between mild global warming and catastrophic global warming. We can all agree on that, right? Well, it really depends. There is a difference as to the magnitude of climate change. We can conclude that the greater the abundance of pollutants in question, the greater the magnitude of climate change. And given the rate of these pollutants in the atmosphere is increasing continuously, it is fair to say there's a time scale for how long we can keep doing this without it being catastrophic. And the transition to cleaner energy sources needs to be taken seriously. The issue isn't, does burning fossil fuel have some warming impact? It does. The issue is, is the climate warming dangerously fast? First of all, it's a scale. If it's warming at all, then it's a bad thing that you want to avoid early. This is like sitting in your house and watching your curtains set on fire and then going, man, that looks bad. It's not too bad yet, but when it gets worse, that's when I'll get up. Also, it's not necessarily just warming. It's a change to the climate overall. These changes to the climate in Australia, for example, have moved rainfall away from the wheat belt, causing extreme economic damage and reduction in the availability of some foods. The effects of climate change are happening now, and they are continuing to happen. Just because it doesn't appear catastrophic doesn't mean it's not a problem at all. In 1986, NASA climate scientist James Hansen, one of the world's most prominent critics of the use of fossil fuels, predicted that if current trends are unchanged, temperatures would rise two to four degrees in the first decade of the 2000s. But as you can see from this graph, since 2000, the trend line is essentially flat. Little or no warming in the last 15 years. Point one, it doesn't matter if a singular scientist a while ago got a prediction wrong. You need to address what the evidence is pointing to now. Point two, that is not how you draw a trend line. Seriously, that is not how you draw a trend line. Point three, the claim that there has been no increase in global temperatures despite an increase in atmospheric CO2 is simply wrong. When you use satellites to assess warming or measure the temperature of the oceans, we can still observe a steady increase as a result of the increasing CO2. Furthermore, even if we focus on global surface temperatures, research still shows that if you account for the temperature along the entire globe, the warming trend continues from 1997 up to 2015. Bunk claims. You are full of bunk claims. Check out our links in the description for a detailed explanation of this. That's probably why we hear much less talk about global warming and much more talk about climate change. Yes, because the term climate change better encompasses the negative effects we are seeing as a direct result of human activities into the atmosphere. Oh no, people change their position based on new evidence. How tragic. What does this have to do with the effectiveness of fossil fuels? Has this climate change made our world more dangerous? The key statistic here, one that is unfortunately almost never mentioned, is climate-related deaths. I'm trying really hard not to just flat out call you a moron here, but you are making it really hard for me. 
People aren't saying that the climate gets so hot, people just collapse dead or spontaneously combust. The primary issue with climate change is it causes problems that can make places people live less livable by things such as much lower crop yields, extinction of important species such as bees, and an increased amount of water and energy to get the same outcome as driving up food prices. I will put a link in the description outlining how climate change affects people. It doesn't just walk up to you with a toothpick in its mouth and a baseball bat in its hands and proceeds to break your kneecaps asking, where's my CO2? That is, how many people die each year from a climate-related cause, including droughts, floods, storms, and extreme temperatures. In the last 80 years, as CO2 emissions have rapidly escalated, the annual rate of climate-related deaths worldwide has rapidly declined by 98%. Oh, bloop. Give me strength. Okay, so you realize that technology has changed a little bit since 1930, right? Despite the environment becoming less livable due to climate change, our technology has improved, allowing us to be more versatile, but that will only get us so far. As the temperature increases, the magnitude of climate change will get to points where our newly gained versatility won't be as helpful. Also, notice how the decline started slowing down drastically after 1970. I'm curious as to why you didn't show the data up until at least 2010. You haven't outlined effectively why we shouldn't start transitioning to cleaner energy sources and enjoy that energy without the side effects it produces. Look, I'm not under the impression that climate change will end our species, but it will significantly affect it to a point where it would be more beneficial to just transition to cleaner energy sources. The reason is that the energy from fossil fuel has allowed the developed world to build a durable civilization, one highly resilient to extreme heat, extreme cold, floods, storms, and so on. Yes, we just said that. The abundance of available energy has made us resilient, but the side effects of fossil fuels are constantly testing that resilience. Why not get the energy and versatility without creating the side effects, so instead of using our resources for damage control, we can use them to really prosper? The developing world, where natural disasters can still wreak terrible havoc, would like the chance to do the same. But to do that, they will need a lot more energy. Perhaps the developed world could work hard on transitioning to clean energy so the negative side effects of fossil fuels don't exist, and then the undeveloped world can just advance their society without being constantly messed up by the climate. If they have to use dirty energy because they don't have the resources to begin the transition to clean energy, then so be it. That doesn't mean the developed world who has the resources to start that transition shouldn't do it, whilst the rest catch up. The cheapest fastest and easiest way to get that energy is from fossil fuels. I actually agree. The developed nations can transition to cleaner energy sources because they have the capital to, thus reducing climate change. The undeveloped nations can use the cheap and fast energy to develop to that point where they can begin their transition, and at the end, everyone can use clean energy and both the climate will be hospitable and they will have the energy to thrive. In sum, fossil fuels don't take a naturally safe environment and make it dangerous. They empower us to take a naturally dangerous environment and make it cleaner and safer. Correction, fossil fuels create a more dangerous environment and give us the ability to mitigate some of that damage from the environment, whereas using at least a large portion of cleaner energy will make the environment more livable and give us the ability to greatly enhance our lives. You neglected the obvious solution here and only presented a fraction of the argument in an attempt to make a fossil fuel propaganda video. Your video is bad, and you should feel bad. I'm Alex Epstein of the Center for Industrial Progress for Prager University. Alex, you suck. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for weekly videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.